Freunde und herzlich willkommen bei Kickout, dem geilsten Wrestling Talk, den es in der Wrestling Welt überhaupt gibt. Der einzige, der regelmäßig ist am Donnerstag um, ach, heute ist gar nicht Donnerstag, heute ist ja Freitag. Wir sind leider heute Freitag für euch da, weil äh, Franz einen Adapter vergessen hat. Und deswegen konnten wir leider nicht live gehen, wir konnten nicht mit euch WWE 2K19 zocken, wir haben kein anderes Spiel im Office. Und wir konnten leider nicht mit euch live über die Geschehnisse von WWE, WXW, GWF und was es nicht sonst noch alles gibt plaudern. Aber dafür machen wir das heute aufgezeichnet. Nächste Woche sind wir wieder live, Franz hat jetzt schon versprochen, den Adapter, Adapter packe ich sofort ein. Der ist nächste Woche da, nächste Woche sind wir wieder live. Und bei mir an meiner Seite ist natürlich James O'Leary, zurück aus Polen. Aber ich, ich, war, ich war zurück. Also letzte Woche. Woche. Ja, ich war, ich, ich war, ich war hier. Du bist nicht hier. Ja, ich, ich war du nicht, war nicht. Ich, war ja, nicht ja. ich bin wieder da. Ähm, ich bin immer noch ein bisschen kränklich. Ähm, das ist so, wenn man krank nach Oberhausen fährt. Wenn man nach Oberhausen fährt, wird mhm. man noch kränker, weil die Stadt scheiße ist. Also jeder hat schon mal in Oberhausen. In Oberhausen kann man nicht viel machen, aber wir haben einen coolen äh, El Paso gefunden. Das war ein Steakhouse von Serben. Das war sehr lecker, kann ich sehr empfehlen. Äh, El Paso. Aber jetzt sind wir wieder da. Wir fangen an, ein bisschen über WWE zu reden. Es ist viel passiert. Fastline, Monday Night Raw, Tuesday Night Smackdown, ja. WWE, NXT, NXT UK. Hast du alles gesehen? Nein, nicht äh, NXT du? in NXT James, ich mach's UK. Ich ja einfach. Sprich Englisch und ich übersetze es für die Leute. Wir machen heute, weil wir sind auf YouTube. Ich spreche Deutsch. Ich, yeah. Du kannst ruhig auf Englisch. I could also say no, I haven't seen NXT in okay. And I haven't seen NXT UK. Everything else I've seen either bits or all of, if that makes sense. So yeah. I've seen at least highlights of every show. Fastlane, Raw, Smackdown. Dann sag mir mal, was deine Highlights von Fastlane waren. Sure. Hat dir die Show gefallen? Uh, gefallen is... Uh, Did you enjoy the show? Um, kind of. Like the, I enjoyed a lot of the show. I skipped quite a lot as well. Um, I didn't watch the women's tag match until I saw... Uh, the whole Beth Phoenix thing because I was like Tamina and Nia like I'm I just I'm not interested in them in the ring I'm sorry that's yeah, just okay. how it is right so I skipped through um, and then the confrontation was fine it was cool um, it was the first title defense of the women's tag team titles right? yes it after was after one month yeah and I mean it was one of those ones where you think they kind of have to retain mm -hmm. otherwise what's the point yeah. so I mean they're probably building to some multi woman match at WrestleMania is my guess where you have like Glaubst du dass es also sowas wie ein Gauntlet oder ein four way match wahrscheinlich mm, für, für die Tag Team Titles Maybe four way match or it could be Gauntlet but I think Gauntlet will run too long Yeah At Mania they tend not to like to have matches Do you matches think it will that, replace the women's battle royal or do we still have one I think you still have one well, because um, there I have think, so many female talent on the roster right I think this will be a pre-show one yeah. where you'll have something like yeah. one Raw team one Smackdown team one NXT team and then Bailey and Sasha who okay. technically are a Raw team but you know they yeah, yeah so that's my guess technically or uh, with Natalia and Beth will be like the Raw team yeah it might be possible because they had that confrontation where Beth Okay, sag mir, sag mir, was war dein absolutes Highlight von Fastlane? Um, mm, absolute Highlight. Uh, ich fand, es waren, viele Matches wurden geändert. There have been a lot mm. of changes in the matches of the announced matches, right? Yeah. The, the match between Andrade and Rey Mysterio was cancelled. They got a four-way match. Yep. Mustafa Ali got put into the uh, world title match. And yep. Kofi Kingston had the fine outing against the bar. Yeah, well, that one was a, neat, a nothing. Uh, I think the, the, the triple threat, Daniel Bryan, uh, Kevin, Kevin Owens. Owens, Mustafa Ali was really good. Ali still comes back from injury and throws himself off the turnbuckle, yeah. onto the apron, onto the everything. Like He's killing himself, quite literally, in the matches, just to try and get over. Uh, I think that match was probably my favorite of the night. And I liked the way that commentary played it off. Mm -hmm. Actually, the whole Mustafa Ali thing, there was no like, oh, they're cheering him when they're clearly booing him. You know, they very clearly said, oh, you know, normally he gets cheered. No. Obviously, it's a disappointment. I was worried it was going to kill Mustafa Ali's comeback. Mm -hmm. Match was great. I think people have forgotten that it was meant to be Kofi by the next time Mustafa Ali's yeah. in the ring in a different situation. So I think it doesn't hurt him that much. And I think it actually builds the Kofi sentiment better than the uh, when people were angry at Ray in 2014 because it was meant to be Daniel Bryan, yeah, which that Rumble, actually right? just killed Ray Mysterio's yeah. momentum like that. This one, I think, will be fine for Mustafa Ali. For the whole, do you give a recommendation for Fastlane to watch it? Or is it yeah. just, you can skip it because it's I a stepping stone anyway? I would say pick pick who you like on the card, watch it. It, it actually was fine. Yeah. Um, I thought it was an okay show. I didn't watch the pre-show. 
I didn't watch the pre-show. So. Ich habe gar nichts von Fastlane gesehen, deswegen bin ich auf, auf, auf euch angewiesen, auch wenn ich mich verhaspel. Sagt mir doch mal in den Kommentaren, welche Matches von Fastlane euch am besten gefallen haben. Gebt mir doch mal eine Empfehlung. Soll ich mir noch mal ein Match angucken? Oder sagt ihr, die Show braucht man nicht gesehen haben, ist scheißegal äh, für die Road to WrestleMania. Bei Raw und SmackDown ist auch eine Menge passiert. Wir wissen jetzt, Kurt Angle wird sein Retirement-Match bei WrestleMania haben. Do you have a guess who his opponent will be? I have one. You have a guess? Yeah, I think it's John Cena. I don't yeah. think they will do Samoa Joe against John Cena. I think they will do John Cena against Kurt Angle because it's the match with uh, John Cena's career started in WWE. Mm -hmm. So it would be fitting if he would be the one, right? Yeah, I think that makes sense because it's not going to be... It, it's not going to be the likes of uh, Shawn Michaels. It's not going to be... That will be my second guess, by the way. I mean, it, not for the, this. If, if this was any other situation, any other mania, I would have said Brock Lesnar would be a really interesting match. Mm -hmm. But... Kurt in his last match, when you know it's his last match, isn't going to face the Universal Champion who's yeah. already booked in a match with Seth Rollins. Mm -hmm. So that would have been another interesting one. I think you're right, actually, on John Cena. It's kind of a money match. I mean, I'd, I'd watch it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I guess that's about as far as that goes. Um, What else was newsworthy on Ron SmackDown? I mean, Batista, Triple H announced, which is cool. Um, I mean, is there any I better way... Match. I want the match. What did he say? I want it. Give me uh, what I want. Give me what I give want. Me what There's I a want. Meme, meme now, right? Yeah, and I was like, ooh, that's, there's a lot going on there. But yep. uh, this is just genius by WWE. There's an Avengers movie coming out three weeks after WrestleMania, and you have Drax from Guardians of the Galaxy well, in actually, WrestleMania. Well, actually, he will not be on any promotional material for Endgame at first because he is dead yeah it, spoilers for two years ago if you haven't seen or a year ago Unless uh, you yeah so they're not on the promotional material but that doesn't matter because everyone will know like ev everyone knows that he is that character already and whether he's in the movie or not in the movie still the speculation will be there so it's a perfect perfect time for WrestleMania to be ja. lining up. Es, there. Einerseits finde ich es auch perfekt, andererseits finde ich aber auch, dass man in den letzten Jahren viel zu wenig mit Batista gemacht hat. Batista war in Blade Runner, Batista mhm. war in, in allen Avengers Guardians of the Galaxy Movies und jetzt erst holt man ihn raus. Ich finde es verschenkt leider. Also es hätte, es hätte schon früher passiert. Man hätte viel enger mit Batista zusammenarbeiten müssen, finde ich. Ja, yeah, um, so looking at this WrestleMania, I actually like the way this is going and mm. I'm looking forward to it because It keeps Triple H out of any main storylines, which is okay. Mm -hmm. Like, not that he needs to be, in no. my mind. But it's just another match, which will have its own storyline. And it isn't crazy and convoluted. It's literally just, we have a history together. I want to kick your ass Th before. There was one word, uh, one sentence by Batista I found interesting. He said, I want to end my career on my terms. Yes. And I want to end your career on your terms. So for me, it sounds like it will be Batista's last match. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, I think that's a good place to be in. I think he clearly is doing well enough now in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. um, I think a few years ago when he returned as Blue Tista, probably wasn't Blue the Tista. right time. Or Blue Tista, yeah. Probably wasn't the right time because they only had the first Guardians of the Galaxy yeah. done and sure it was looking good. But now he's in a great spot. So, Do you think he will win? I hope so, honestly. kind of hope so. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of, because it doesn't hurt Triple H for him to win. What's your opinion on the Kofi Kingston storyline? Uh, feels a lot like the Daniel Bryan storyline from WrestleMania 30. I'm okay with it. Mm -hmm. I just don't know how they're going to write their way out of SmackDown. Because they announced this week on SmackDown that next week is going to be a gauntlet match with Randy Orton, Samoa Joe, uh, The Bar... The bar And Eric Rowan, and maybe even one other person, and I can't remember. Yeah, um, um, might be. And Kofi has to beat all of them to get to Mania. And undoubtedly, New Day are going to be barred from ringside as well. Okay, so... Um, Randy Orton will be attacked by AJ Styles. Samoa That Joe, makes sense. Samoa Joe will be attacked somehow by the other people from the four-way uh, United States mm -hmm. feud. So he will beat these two somehow. He will beat Rowan, and he will get his revenge on the bar. So they will find some loopholes, I think, too. They will. I'm not concerned that they won't find them. I'm just concerned that they'll be really dumb I, loopholes. Well, the Orton one makes sense. Yeah, my, my problem with the storyline is, uh, it's, it's not mal 
ein halbes Jahr her, sondern nur ein paar Monate, dass Vince McMahon kam und gesagt hat, so, ihr seid jetzt die Storyline-Schreiber, ihr, das Universe, ihr entscheidet, wir McMahons halten uns zurück und jetzt ist er wieder der böse Boss in der Storyline. Mhm. Und das ist so, es ist wie früher, wie, wie bei Daniel Bryan, wie du gesagt hast, wie immer diese Authority-Storylines. Und ich bin müde von diesen Authority-Storylines. Wenn die Fans Kofi Kings in einem Main Event sehen wollen, wenn, wenn äh, die, alles schreit doch darauf hin, mach doch nicht so eine dumme Storyline daraus. I think there are way better ways to put Kofi Kingston in that match instead of just doing another boring ass authority storyline, beat all these competitors, all oh, prove me that you, that you earn it and stuff like that. He obviously earned it in the eyes of the fans. You don't have to convince everybody else. Just put him in the fucking match. Yeah, I kind of agree, but at the same time it's like... It's not much of a storyline to just go, you're in the match. Shit, now what do we do? Because you're Kofi Kingston and we haven't actually bothered to build you a character for the last four years. You're just a part of the New Day. So it means you can be really funny, you can do segments, and you're really interesting, yeah. but as a singles competitor but character... Just make, make him do promos, that's it. He can talk. Yeah, of course he can. Like, and, and I'm not saying he can't talk. I'm not saying anything like yeah. that. But n right now... Kofi Kingston only has no character. The New Day have a character, oh, and true. the New Day have charisma and can yeah. talk, and they've had storylines, but Kofi Kingston himself is not an individual character, and that's where they struggle, and in three weeks to go, shit, we've got to build a character yeah. and be a main event but caliber. But still, they had a promo last Tuesday, and yeah. it was not Kofi Kingston, it was the New Day, and it yeah. was mostly the other two talking for him, mm -hmm. right? So... And it's been like that for a long time. Yeah, but they're still not breaking out of that. They're not putting him over as a singles guy, right? Right. Still, he's still part of the New Day, and he will be part of the New Day even if he becomes WWE champion. Right, which, even if he's at Mania in the main event, so, or not in the main event, because that match is not being the main event. No. <laughs> but do you, think, no do you think he will win? No. Why? Because I don't think they can rely on him in their minds. Like the New Day, I think they can rely on the New Day and maybe that's an interesting play because it's been a very long time since we've had uh, a champion who isn't the standout from the group. You know, like you have Daniel Bryan and Rowan and Rowan is clearly the sidekick. Yeah. You know, it, it, we haven't had a champion <laughs> that has two stable mates who aren't just sidekicks that no, do they nothing, are equal, right? right? Yeah, exactly. It's been a very long time since we've had that. I can't remember any No, time. neither can I. Closest would be Evolution because they were tag champs at the same time. Well, yeah, but and all of them broke out of Evolution to compete with Triple H, right? And that in never the happened. end, yeah. yeah. That, that will never happen in New Day. They will never. No, no. I, exactly. Like I, somebody in the chat, leave it in the comments if you can think of an example of yeah. that. Um, ha however, if this was SummerSlam, I think he'd win because it's summer and you try different things in the summer because viewership is already dropping anyway. So. Meiner Meinung nach sehen wir bei WrestleMania einen neuen WWE Champion. Sie werden Kofi Kingston zum Champion machen. Wie sieht ihr das denn? Was sagt ihr denn? Sagt uns mal in den Kommentaren, ob ihr glaubt, dass Kofi Kingston den World Title gewinnen wird, uh, which would actually make him the first. African, he's not African American actually, he's from Ghana. Yeah, he's from Ghana. So he was born in Africa, yeah. so he will actually be, be the first born African WWE champion. And sure. can, can you remember the last time a black person has held the, not the Universal, or not the World Heavyweight, but the WWE title? Last Now you've got to go through all the like what brand it was on in order to go. <laughs> I can tell you. Okay. Mark Henry and Booker T were world heavyweight world champions. World heavyweight champions. The last who's considered African American was, was the, the Rock. The Rock. And the, he's the only one. And I would not consider, to be honest, The Rock to be the picture perfect African American. Well, that, that's guy. a different story, right? But yeah. whatever people believe. But I think that's just very telling that it goes back that far. I guess that's the once in a lifetime match. Is what we're talking about there, which isn't too far, oh. but it still it still says a lot. But he's right? the only one. Yeah, yeah. My history is. Uh, I know that he's the only one, and there have been plenty of guys who could have been WWE champion. Yeah. Shelton Benjamin with the right booking. Bobby Lashley could have been WWE. Bobby champion. Lashley definitely could have been. Now, not so much. Yeah. I'm not a big fan of the Lashley Gallows. Well, at least Baron he's not. Corbin. He's not. He, yeah. Well, it's like the League of Nations. <laughs> it's just three when random guys put together. <laughs> It's fucking horrible. Like, McIntyre is 
I know this is the like the the online message board type comment, but McIntyre is so much better than that storyline. Like, I don't know what they're doing. Why is he always somebody's sidekick? That's what I don't get. What? Where is Nikki Cross? No. <laughs> where is EC3? Well, EC3 was on the Watch Along show, yeah. Uh, yeah, with the, which, which, which they took down. Which I did. They took that down. Yeah, because of the fucking comment by Nigel. He said oh. <laughs> they took that. He said something with fucking, and they took it down. Fucking stumbling my words or something, yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Well, I mean, you. That's and surprising because Nigel doesn't do, do that on commentary. So I'm surprising yeah. that surprised that he didn't. So anything it. else n newsworthy on WWE um, program? Yes, there was, and I can't remember what it was. Um, Ronda, it was to, yeah, Becky? it was one Ronda and Becky and Charlotte. And I hate this so so much. So Ronda comes in, attacks Becky, so that Becky is in the match. Is in the match. Because she was in the match and then got taken out of the match and then had a match to be put back in the match and now she's back in the match. Yeah, I wanna wanna ask them something. So the plan was like Ronda Rousey vacated the title, they yeah. said. And so Stephanie McMahon said, Becky and Charlotte, you will fight for the raw women's title. They're both SmackDown wrestlers. And then Ronda came, No, no, I never vacated the mm. title. It's it's the deal. So yes, you're right. Um, stupid loophole because when you win the Royal Rumble and you get to pick your brand, that's always kind of been the way. Is it's so is like Becky you swap now on over. Raw? I think so. That's my like. Okay. I think that's like the weird kayfabe loophole Might that be. they use. And then you know you assume because Vince brings Charlotte out and on Raw and says she's the one that's gonna be yeah whatever I yeah. hate that storyline so much it's just a convoluted con it, what's the word Con convoluted convoluted mess yeah it makes no sense no I remember we were sat here like four or five weeks ago yeah and you asked me are they gonna put Charlotte in the match and I said they will, and I hope they do it soon, but not in a confusing way. <coughs> and they did. And they did it in the most confusing way possible. Now, I think this is because the rumors back then were Ronda stepping away, mm -hmm. right, after this match. Because she wanted I to start think, a family or something. I think this is the way of having her not eat the pin or whatever the, the finish of the match is because Charlotte can take a loss at Mania. She had wins at Mania. She Do was you think she will lose? I, th I mean, I think the payoff WWE has cool, to be the Becky. They, they cooled down Becky. They have, The yeah. storyline cooled the whole thing so much down that for me, it's not even main event worthy anymore. I don't see it as the main event. I actually see Seth Rollins against Brock Lesnar as the m more valued match, to be honest. Which is sad because yeah. it was the <laughs> it was easiest the story angle. to write. But I think keeping an angle that hot for that long is yeah, real sure is tough, yeah. you know. Um, well, not that I've ever booked a match at WrestleMania, but, you know, it's... <laughs> well, if they would have uh, Freddie Prince Jr. still at the booking team... Yeah, he would have done it 10 years ago. Don't worry. Like, don't worry. <laughs> Freddie so Prince Jr. Right? was on it 10 years ago. <laughs> yeah. Uh, wie sieht's denn bei euch aus? Freut ihr euch auf das Triple Threat Match zwischen Becky, Charlotte und, und Ronda Rousey? Habt ihr eine Vermutung, wer das Match gewinnt? Wird Ronda das erste Mal besiegt? Wird sie den Titel verlieren? Wird Becky gewinnen? Wird Charlotte gewinnen? Schreibt es uns in den Kommentaren. Um, I'm sure there was other stuff that happened. Uh, you went here last week. We talked about it a little bit. Um, the Tomas Champa neck injury, very mm -hmm. unfortunate. Oh, um, yeah, the tapings were last night. Do you yeah, know the results? I haven't seen the results of the tapings. Okay. I'm guessing Mustache Mountain go pretty deep in the Dusty Classic. Um, I don't know for sure. The tournament is over. They, uh, they have a winner already. Was it already broadcast? No. Or it was just taped? Yeah, but the okay. semifinals were broadcast yesterday. Okay. For, uh, yeah, well, two days ago. A Mustache Mountain still in it? No. Up until live. Damn it. All right, whatever. They lost against the Forgotten Sons. The Forgotten oh, Sons really? in the finals against so Alistair forgettable. Black and uh, Ricochet. Oh, then Alistair Black. Oh, no, because Alistair Black and Ricochet are having some pretty I, great matches. I cannot spoil you now. No, of course you're not going to spoil it. Um, Alistair Black and Ricochet versus... Uh, on SmackDown, it was the Hardys, and I didn't watch the match, but I thought, wow, that's actually a really cool... Matt Hardy's in shape, right? He cannot move at all, but he's in shape. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Oh, and I had a... Sorry to completely ramble. Had a really interesting thought when there was a match. It was like a four-way match that was different 
iterations of NXT through history. And I can't remember. Oh, no, it was the tag team title match on Raw. It was um, Rude and Gable mm-hmm. against uh, Ricochet and Alistair Black and Dash and Dawson. And mm-hmm. I was like, wow, everyone in this ring has been in NXT, but at completely different times. Yeah. And I was like, that's pretty cool. Like you have the three eras of NXT. The very first era with uh, the tag teams of Dash and Dawson. And I still don't get this tag team at all. Dash and Dawson? No. Ricochet and Alistair Black. Oh, Ricochet and Alistair Black. I don't get it, to be honest. I, are they are there, and I know they will break them up anyway. And yeah. yeah. So I'm not emotionally invested in them. Nope. Just a random tag team. I enjoy their matches, though. Yeah. That much I'm fine with. Well, the, uh, the andere Möglichkeit wäre natürlich Ricochet bei 205. Ich bin sehr froh, dass das nicht der Fall ist. Deswegen sollen die no. mal so lange im Tag Team bleiben, wie sie können. Please don't send Ricochet to 205 Live. Le- and I don't mean that because I don't like 205 Live. I actually think he'd have the best matches ja. on 205 Live. But do I think he's ever coming back out of 205 Live? I think Mustafa Ali is the only one that has taken the boat trip past Hades and when back up to the well, surface level. Well, you can escape 205 Live to NXT UK, like sure, Noam like Noam uh, or, or Mustafa can, Ali to or SmackDown. when you do a Neville and never come back to work. Leo Rush and be part of Lashley smacking well, his ass after two, two weeks on 205 Live. Right? Yeah. So he's half escaped. Yeah. He's on like, you know, uh, a day trip to Monday Night Raw every so, so often. Lashley is now Intercontinental Champion again, right? He beat, did, he beat Finn Balor. With a, like oh he did a springboard move and then he did a spear, I think. Yeah, I actually skipped that match on Raw because I was like, yeah, Finn's going to win. Apparently not. No, because they have big things for him planned for WrestleMania. Finn Balor or Bobby Lashley? Well, they have promotional material now with him as a demon, so... That's always Surprise. great to do it, to put out promotional material without a storyline, without any explanation. I mean, it should be against Taker. If you want an interesting sideshow match, you put him against Taker, but I don't know whether Taker's in shape. I mean, Finn would definitely carry most of that match, because he'd have to. But Well, he gets punched, and that's it. He cannot do any moves with The Undertaker. Yeah. I mean, you're right. that's right. I mean. So I've seen a lot of wrestling last weekend. Yeah, you have. This is where I wanted to ask you questions okay. about things. Also, ich war ja letzte Woche nicht da. Äh, letzte Woche am Donnerstag war ich krank. Aber am Freitag ging es für mich mit dem Flieger nach Düsseldorf. Von da weiter mit dem Skytrain zum Düsseldorf Bahnhof. Und von dort weiter mit dem Regionalzug nach Oberhausen. Denn das größte Wrestling-Turnier, Festival, was auch immer Europas, stand an das 16 Karat Gold. Es war mein äh, viertes 16 Karat inzwischen. Mm. Äh, 2016 war mein erstes. Äh, 2016 unter anderem mit Angelico. Trevor Lee war da, Silas mhm. Young war da, groß aufgefahren. Und dieses Jahr waren großartige Leute da, wie zum Beispiel äh, Chris Brooks, Timothy Thatcher, äh, Pentagon Junior, mhm. Mark Davis, äh, Ilya Dragunov, David Sad, Daisuke Sikimoto, Shigehiro Irie, Phoenix, Ray Horus, Axel Dieter Junior, Marius Alani und Lucky Kid. That is one hell of a lineup. It is. Like that truly is we talked about it briefly last week yeah. one insanely good lineup it is and uh, this uh, have you seen pictures of the stage or videos or something yeah yeah i have looked great ein großartiges lob an uh, die macher ich weiß nicht ob das dennis birkendahl ist du, De- dennis ist zuständig für die produktion die halle also uh, war unfassbar die waren diesmal in der größeren uh, turbinhalle franz war ja auch schon mal beim karate ist auch bei dir vier jahre her ne Nee, drei. Nein, also ich, äh, ich war bei zwei und bei, mit Silas Young, was du gesagt hast, da war ich auch dabei. Ja, und danach hast du noch mal einmal gearbeitet da, ne? das war 2017. Und die sind jetzt umgezogen in die größere Turbinhalle, das heißt, es haben am Samstag über 1500 Leute reingepasst. It looked great. The pe- they had wide shots of the, the crowd. Drei LED-Screens, oben noch ein, eine, so ein Würfel, ein kleiner. Ähm, die einzige und der große Nachteil war, man hat nichts gesehen. You couldn't see shit. Oh, really? Yeah. From the crowd? You couldn't see shit. You couldn't see the second rope. And that was really a pain in the ass. Die haben, uh, they've put up uh, some uh, podesta, I don't know what the word is. Barriers? Uh, no, no, where Wait. you can, st- uh, elevated s- uh, standing. Positions. Oh, okay, yeah. Something like that. They put it in the far corner of the room and the walls. Uh, maybe because of fire restrictions or something mm. like that, but still... Um, 
the only position where I could actually see something was behind the seated people. So everybody was like located there. Oh. So if there were people as tall as you, you couldn't see anything. I was at the back of the arena. I was sitting on some like uh, of a stang of a geländer, like where you can like some barriers. Okay. I was sitting on that. My ass hurt like hell, and so I could see a little bit. Um, for the price I've paid, which is over 90 euros with all the uh, additional fees and something, I expect to see good. You expect to see. Yeah, I, ex yeah, I expect to see. <laughs> it's not even and, a good view. And a lot, of people a, view. a lot of people complain on, on Twitter and all the social things. And VXV, you have to p uh, step up your social media game because the answer, well, you can buy always tickets for the balcony, is not a <laughs> fair answer, to be honest. It's a shit answer. And when I pay 90 euros for three <laughs> days, I don't expect to be l like blasted like this. Uh, that's a funny response. Yeah. And not funny in a good way. Um, <laughs> production was super. Die matches mm. waren super. Die shows waren super. Ich kann nichts Schlechtes darüber sagen, aber bitte kümmert euch nächstes Jahr darum, dass mehr Leute sehen können. Mobile Podeste direkt hinter den Zuschauer rein, vielleicht in drei Ebenen, dass die Leute da äh, wie, ja, auf drei Ebenen stehen können. Ist bezahlbar und ist auch alles mit Fire Restrictions und so weiter möglich. Das ist der einzige Nachteil, den ich mhm. habe. Die Shows waren gut, die Leute waren alle super aufgelegt. Ich habe äh, ganz viele Leute getroffen. Flöte habe ich getroffen, den Reiseleiter habe ich getroffen. Ich habe Leute von Ringfuchs getroffen. Vielen, vielen Gruß an die Leute von Cage Match, an Flosh, an Funny und so weiter und so fort. Super nette Leute. Auf der Aftershow-Party habe ich mit Bad Bones getanzt. Der war you, auch da. You dance with well, Bad Bones. I, I wanted to dance with Bad Bones. Like they played good music. The Aftershow-Party was fun this year. And then a huge dude, he was like two meters 20 or something, 150 kilograms. Mm. He could move like a ballerina. And he had a dance off with Bad Bones. And I was like, what the hell is Jeez. going on here? That was so much fun. How uh, was Bad Bones dancing? Like, good. Yeah? Yeah. Like the Macho Man. No, he wasn't. <laughs> no, he was dancing pretty good. Uh, Gruß an Shaggy. Shaggy had very good at CJ Garbeit Karaoke. The English you fans. You karaoke as well? Uh, I didn't do oh, it, okay. but the others. I was Wait, still no. sick. I was still uh, sick, so okay. I didn't want to an uh, annoy didn't anybody with my... Uh, yeah, Freddie but Mercury. all the English guys, uh, I don't know if you know any of them, like Mike Kilby or something. Uh, do you have uh, heard of him? I, I mean, I, I, well, I've heard of... Uh, yeah. Yeah, well, they, they danced, they, they sang, and uh, they, get, uh, they were getting on my nerves during the match between Ab Absolute Annie and Bobby Guns because they were chanting for 20 minutes, Guns, Bobby Guns, Andy Guns, Bobby Guns, Andy, for fucking 20 minutes, no matter what happened in the match. We like you. But that was annoying. That's um, so what I say to Virgil a lot of the time. Yeah, I'm annoying too. So <laughs> I'm the loudest guy in the crowd when, when, we, I'm, when I'm doing commentary, so I can relate. Um, my match of the night. Wait, I was gonna, oh, before yeah. you say match of the night, yeah, okay. I was going to say, and yeah. you can't include Lucky for the first part of this, okay? Because I, I you're biased. No, hang barely. on. In the question. Yeah. So who impressed you, not Lucky, And who were you expecting more from? Now, I know that's a hard question. That doesn't mean they underperformed. But who was in a spot that you thought maybe they deserved more from? Do you get what I mean by no. that question? This is a pretty straightforward question. What had I said? So, who... From whom was the most impressed and who was I can, I can tell you who surprised me the most. Mm -hmm. uh, I was uh, genuinely surprised by Pentagon Jr., in a good way? In a good way. A he, good? He, yeah, okay. he is not the flashiest wrestler of all the luchadors. Mm -hmm. Ray Horos and Phoenix risked their necks yeah. more than he did. And his back every time he yeah. jumps out into the audience. But he, he is a tremendous entertainer. Mm -hmm. And his match against Ilya was top-notch. That was amazing. And I never expected him to, to have that great of a match. Um, who disappointed me? Oh, no, hang on, wait. Okay, the translation for disappointment is... is Was there somebody, for instance, that went out in the first round that you thought was going to make it further and you just didn't see as much of that you wanted? Not that they, they performed badly. Well, Jörn Simmons, he was gone after the first round and then you never saw him again for the whole tournament. Normally, mm. when, when people are eliminated in the first round, they the come back in the day, second yeah. match or third match to have a throwaway six-man yeah. tag team match or four-way something, Jörn Simmons never came back. <laughs> David Starr came, uh, came out on the second day and uh, held a promo. I 
I couldn't beat Walter. I will beat Walter, but I will not compete for the next days. Okay. Timothy Thatcher uh, went out in the first round against, and against Lucky Kid. He competed at Ambition, and he had a match at the, at the third night, mm. which was the weirdest six-man tag team match of all. Alexander Wolf, Timothy Thatcher, and Fight Miller against Yuki Ishikawa, Daisuke Sikimoto, and Shigehiro Irie. Like, three ring kampf guys against three Japanese uh, guys, and I was like, okay, they can do it. That's why they do it. Like, that's the only reason. Um, yeah, I expected at least to see a bit more of Jörn Simmons because I think he was very underutilized in the last months at mm -hmm. WXW. Um, and I was very sad that Daisuke was eliminated in the first round because I wanted to see him compete. He's a former WXW world champion, right? And, uh, well, it was against Ilya. I don't know if that was the right choice to put him against Ilya in the first round. Same goes with Lucky Kid and Timothy Thatcher because they've built Timothy Thatcher up before the tournament so much. They had a huge promo segment with him. All the people were bes uh, beh behind him, rallying behind him, because that was the first time he came out without ring comp music. Mm. So he had his own entrance music. He never had a ring comp scarf or anything. And to be eliminated in the first round was a shocker, to be honest. Um, mm. So I was hoping to see more of him, and I was hoping if they do Lucky Kid against Timothy Thatcher with this outcome, it should have been a semifinal match, I think. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So how was the finals and the moment... The uh, winning moment. Well, <clears throat> mm -mm -mm. do you want a different question? Should we move on? <laughs> well, honestly, it's difficult for me to tell um, because I think there. To, to make it to 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 phrase it like this, I think there were people in the crowd more surprised than I was mm. about the outcome, mm -hmm. um, which doesn't mean it is a bad thing. Sure, uh, but the matches and the right. Uh, to it were great. Okay. The, the semi-final matches of Lucky Kick against Ilya, mm. that was there was great, and the finals against Walter was great as well. So um, I was I was emo emotionally invested in it. Mm -hmm. um, but there were matches on the shows where I was more like entertained by it. Yeah, because I get that. I'm I'm not the sports wrestling guy, right? That's why I don't like New Japan as much. Mm -hmm. I'm more like I love flippy shit. I love I cannot watch a whole three a three hour show of PWG, but that's sure. more the style I like. So there was a, a match between Schadenfreude and the uh, Lucha guys. Mm -hmm. That was fucking insane. There were spots all over the place. That was my match of the of the weekend. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, because yeah, I I feel like going over Valter right now yeah. is a massive By feather submission. in your cap. That I didn't fucking, even know. He fucking made him submit. What What was the finish? The crossface, which they oh. call rice lock at WXW for fucking no reason at all. It's the lion's gate. Um, and not the, what What? What does uh, uh, Brett Lion's cage. <laughs> Okay. Um, eh, commentary. Sometimes we get shit wrong. But, but they went full circle with it because in the first round match, we had David Starr against Walter. Mm. And um, I couldn't see that, but I read it online afterwards. That <laughs> to, be, yeah, to be honest, that David Starr <laughs> had Walter in some uh, submission move. And uh, I don't know if he tapped or if he had his foot in the ropes or something like that, but he had to break the hole. Sure. And afterwards, Walter beat David Starr with the submission. Mm. So... After the tournament, uh, David Starr congratulated Walter, uh, uh, congratulated Lucky Kid, and said, "Yeah, the tournament began for uh, ended for Walter like uh, like it began, he tapping out." So that's they cool. actually went full circle, but you couldn't see shit. That's that's a crazy, crazy feather in the cap. What with Walter being now on NXT UK yeah. and and just outside of the WWE ecosystem, yeah. he actually I think is like before going to WWE was, in my opinion, one of the most talked about European indie yeah. stars yeah. in the world yeah. right now. Where No matter where he went, he was always like, oh, the big European talent yeah. that's going around. Well, the, so. the WWE nickname they give him is still shit. The Austrian anom Anomaly, what is it? An anomaly. Anomaly, yeah, well, that's a hard word. But they always do that, the Dutch destroyer. Yeah, it's got to have that uh, alliteration. If I were WXW, I would uh, try to get out uh, David Starr against Lucky Kid feud mm -hmm. out of it because Lucky Kid made something that David Starr couldn't manage, mm -hmm. right? So what uh, What does 16 Karat give you? Excuse me, I've never I really I think uh, Lucky Kid will sometime get a title shot might be at shortcut to the top or something. Okay. They are, well, they never... He gets a nice trophy. Ours was bigger, by the way, at the Light Heavyweight World Cup. <laughs> it's not all about size. No, well... <laughs> <laughs> it is in wrestling. Um, <laughs> and, uh, Don't ask Batista that. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, Johnny Mundo. Uh, <laughs> and uh, well, they had they had really 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 nice little things uh, throughout the tournament because um, after uh, Aussie Open won the tag team titles mm -hmm. from Rise in a triple threat match against JFK. I'm a huge JFK fan, by the way. I even bought a T-shirt of Francis Caspian because it was very fresh. And um, I will explain later. Okay. Um, and uh, after the match. Um, where there were still altercations between uh, Aussie Open and and um, and Rice, mm -hmm. Chris Brooks came uh, uh, and joined them. Uh, joined joined Aussie Open, so they debuted Schadenfreude at uh, WXW and Lucky sure. Kid. At is WXW on Rise, is on Rise, but, but in the UK is on Schadenfreude. Yeah, so yeah. they are playing with it. And after Lucky uh, Kid won the tournament, actually they had Rise congr congratulate him, Pete Bounce and Ivan Kiev, and then Schadenfreude came out and mm. uh, applauded him. So I think they will build up here something as well, which is quite in quite interesting. So yeah. they they still have Karat is for, for me it's like a thing of its own. I'm not a, yeah. the hugest fan of the storylines uh, WXW does around uh, the the whole year. Because I think sometimes it's very inconsistent, um, but at Karat everything comes full circle, and they get a lot of things they can build upon in mm. the weeks after. So I think a thing between Lucky Kid and, and David Starr and the rise against Shan for the thing might be interesting in the weeks to come. That's cool. Yeah. It sounds like it was a good set of shows overall. Yeah, unless you were there because yeah. you couldn't see. Yeah, well, that's so. Still a if you're problem. watching you can, on you wherever can watch you it watch on it, WXW yeah. now, uh, I think uh, wow. all three days are released, or you can watch the Light Heavy World World Cup on wearegwf.com. Uh, next year, you go coming to Karat? Maybe, yeah. I guess. I can recommend it. If I'm it. still allowed to be in Germany at that point, thanks to my country self imploding, but it's mm. fine. Um, that so is have not to a wrestling a German topic. Guy, maybe. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's not this topic. Thankfully, we don't have to talk about that with wrestling. But um, yeah. like Hero World Cup, yeah. you weren't here for our wrap up. Yeah. Um, I wasn't there at the show, and I still haven't had the time to watch the show yet. Well, I'm giving it at the moment, so you can I, watch all the highlights on our <laughs> Twitter account at We Are GWF. <laughs> I have been seeing some of the the yeah. gifs. Yeah, and it, I'm it, doing it. Looked like a good show. I yeah. did watch a few of the the yeah. opening matches. Uh, yeah. What was your big moment of the show? I don't have a big moment of the show, to be honest. Um, of course, everybody will say the main event. Mm -hmm. I've, I've seen now the whole show again, and I'm, I gift all the matches. I find quite interesting that all the four opening matches are completely different. Mm -hmm. uh, when, you, when you watch Justin White against A-Kid, they started very slow, but with very innovative uh, submission holds, and then they build up to the big spots for two people uh, who are actually... Uh, well not known in, in Berlin at all. Mm -hmm. They get uh, This Is Awesome chance at the end. Um, compared to the first opening match between El Fantasma and Johnny Storm, which is one of the most entertaining matches I've ever seen. It's hilarious. It actually, I bursted out laughing twice because it was so funny. Um, I think it's a very diverse show. It showcased, re it's really a nice showcase about what light heavyweight is all about. It's mm. not about just high flying. It's all about entertaining. We have a, a way more competitive match between Jem Kaplan and Lucky Kid. Uh, and we had the Lucha Underground uh, match between, between Angelico and Matt Cross. I think we really showcased different styles and different match types in the opening round. And then at the end of the show, we had the huge, 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 huge four-way match, which is which is absolutely insane and incredible. So, uh, I think all around it was, for me, it was a more entertaining show than Global Warning, and uh, I think it's something we can build up on and stack up on in the next uh, weeks and months to come. Yeah, absolutely. Like I, I still need to make sure I go and watch that main event. Yeah, and the other matches. No, the whole show. Yeah. The whole show. The whole show. I need to watch all. Until of next it. week. Um, that's your homework. Uh, it's your homework. Promise. Here. Pinky promise here. Pinky promise here. Damn it. Ich hoffe, ihr habt die Show schon gesehen. Wie gesagt, auf Twitter könnt ihr, ich habe ganz viele GIFs gemacht von allen Matches, die könnt ihr euch natürlich alle angucken. Noch besser ist natürlich, wenn ihr euch die Show komplett anguckt. Wir haben ein Match auch schon äh, veröffentlicht, und zwar A-Kid gegen Justin White. Franz, heute ist Freitag. Kommt am Free Match Friday was raus, oder? Nein. Am Free Match Saturday. Free -Match Saturday. Ähm, ansonsten steht natürlich auch unsere nächste Show an. Es ist am 6. April Blockbuster. Äh, die Tickets verkaufen sich unfassbar krass. Leute, holt euch die Tickets. Wir haben jetzt schon ein paar Matches angekündigt. Unter anderem zum allerersten Mal gegeneinander John Badbones Klinger gegen Orlando Silver. Mhm. 
du bist der Nächste, hat er gesagt. Und offensichtlich sieht das Doug Williams genauso, denn er hat das Match angesetzt, die beiden gegeneinander. Und äh, wir haben natürlich Tarkan Aslan gegen Pascal Spalter. Und ähm, das Match ist angesetzt worden. Es wurde sich ein bisschen beschwert. Kann man jetzt einfach jeden attackieren und bekommt dann direkt einen Titelkampf? Äh, da steckt natürlich noch ein bisschen mehr Geschichte dahinter. Ich meine, Pascal Spalter, wen hat er alles besiegt? Er hat Rambo und Lucky Kid im Triple Threat Match besiegt, zum ersten Mal ein Triple Threat Match in Berlin gewonnen. Er hat Brian Cage besiegt und er hat ihn wirklich fertig gemacht. Was ich nur ein bisschen spannend daran finde, eigentlich hat ja Pascal einen Umschlag. He won in uh, Mystery Mayhem Envelope, right? Mm -hmm. And he still gets to challenge one month before Mystery Mayhem, he gets to challenge the uh, GWF World Champion. Maybe he doesn't want to wait. Maybe he doesn't want to see. Maybe, maybe there's a loser weight title of his GWF. Mm -hmm. the maybe envelope. there is. So that's maybe the reason why he attacked Takan Aslan. He wants to become the four-time champion. And I think the chances have never been higher, to be honest. James. I mean... A loser weight you title there. match would be more I think, I th apt. Well, <laughs> just imagine, I think it it's a good thing you went there because Pascal Sparta came out and yeah. had a chair in his hand and George Kukas was there. Have you been there? You think they would have taken you? it out on me? Maybe. If you were standing in the way, if you were handing him the title or something. I think it's a good thing you went there, my friend. And maybe you should stay away from Pascal Spalter and George Kukas at Blockbuster as well. I mean, they don't scare me, if that's no? what you're saying. Uh, we'll see on uh, April 6th, right? I'm a lot faster, let me put it that way. Yeah, a running uh, advocate to the king. That's, that's nice. Hey, I didn't say I was running away. Hmm. Ein Match haben wir noch für euch und ein Match werde ich euch jetzt hier exklusiv ankündigen. Okay, vielleicht nicht exklusiv, vielleicht habe ich es auf Facebook schon gemacht, ich mache es aber trotzdem, weil wir haben nämlich am Ende vom Light Table Raid World Cup gesehen, wie El Phantasmo Angelico für die nächste Show herausgefordert hat. Die Antwort von Angelico gab es noch nicht, aber die Antwort gibt es vom Matchmaker Doug Williams. Und Doug Williams hat gesagt, okay, das ist das Match, was wir sehen werden. Ein GWF Berlin Title Match, Angelico muss den Titel gegen El Phantasmo bei Blockbuster verteidigen. Mm. Is yeah. that just announced? Or it's, 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 it's fresh from this table to the audience. That is one hell of a match. Who's your pick? The winner of the winner first, of first or the winner of the... Or he's not only the winner of the first uh, Light Heavyweight World Cup, he's the current Berlin champion as well. So it's like, ooh. I don't know, but the interesting thing on this one is recently we've seen a lot of El Fantasmo as you said, being in a very much so an entertaining personality. We know he can get it done. Yeah. We know he's a serious competitor, but this is really like his foot. He didn't actually have a title opportunity yet, right? It was... Well, he... It I mean, legacy, right? Was it legacy? Did he face Jem Kaplan? <coughs> it was a four-way match with ah. Mike Bailey and with uh, with Michael Kovac. But it's, but it's first, a single. It's the first one-on-one -on -one match opportunity, and he knows Angelico. They competed mm -hmm. together as head bangerang in, yeah. in the UK, uh, or they had a tag team match at EW, uh, EWP as well, right? But it's the type of thing that it's like uh, they are so similar. I think this is the, the it's an incredible match. Isn't yeah, it? it's going to be great. Like that, it really is going to be great. Um, und das wird auch nicht das einzige Titelmatch sein. Wie gesagt, World Title Match haben wir auch und die Tag Team Champions Senza Volta und Orlando, äh, Orlando ja, äh, Oliver Carter natürlich, der neue NXT UK Superstar Oliver Carter. Sie werden ihre Titel auch aufs Spiel setzen, weil wir wissen noch nicht gegen wen. We don't know who. No. Do you have a guess? Uh, I mean, obviously I didn't see the last show yet, so yeah. I, I don't really have a, a great guess, but my guess based on previous, uh, remembering back to that Arrows of Hungary versus Muskelkater match from our first show at Festal Kreuzberg, you have to feel like Muskelkater somewhere in the mix there. Well, maybe it's a triple threat. Maybe it could be. Maybe Arrows will get a rematch, or maybe Group Anarchy will be involved as well. Could like be. There, there, are many, there are a lot of options there in the tag team division. And are you excited to see Laura Di Matteo back here? Yeah, of course. I always it, enjoy watching Laura Di Matteo's work. We've seen her at a bunch of revolutions. I've had the pleasure of doing a few ring introductions. Uh, so, yeah, are always. Are you doing the ring introductions for the women's matches now? I don't think so. Oh. Would you like to? Olaf might have something to say about that, but... Also Leute, holt euch die Tickets für GWF Blockbuster, ja, äh, unter gwf.tickettoaster.de. Franz hat den Link bestimmt in die Beschreibung unten reingemacht. Äh, ansonsten haben wir jetzt eine Viertel, Dreiviertelstunde gequatscht. Haben wir noch irgendwelche Themen? Do you have anything else on your chest? Uh, only that we go around the areas that the fans stand or sit in to check the view. What? 
when you buy a ticket for GWF, yeah. we have gone around <laughs> and said, what's the view like here? <coughs> what's the view like here? How much can I see? Are we asking the people? No, but we've done it. We do it beforehand, before the show. We stand there and we go, okay. Oh, yeah. That's, yeah, yeah that I was trying not to fire direct oh. shots, but... Also, uh, keine Sorge. Also, wie gesagt, <laughs> in Hamburg kann man übrigens bei der WXW super gut sehen. Hamburg Markthalle is a very nice location. Uh, mm -hmm. At WXW, you can watch the show pretty well. I think WXW has heard the criticism, oh, not sure, only yeah. of me, but all of all the other people, and they will... Uh, do s the pre-sale has already started for next year, so... For next year's carrot? All seats are sold out, all the balcony tickets wow. are sold out, all the diamond packages are sold out, I have no idea what that shit is, and all the VIP... Jeez. Uh, we will buy you drinks packages have been sold out as well. Uh, so they know how to sell tickets. Well, of course, because they put on a great three-day, like, just if you want to see it's not, three days not, of... No, no, it's not only three days. You can go out there on Thursday and watch Inner Circle, and on Saturday you can watch uh, other promotions as well. Sure. Well, Gary Ward was there from wrestling. Wrestlegate oh, as well. They, okay. they put on a three-way Oh, yeah, they match. put on a show, right? The, or a match. And well, people were chanting, like, Wrestling we want you. Please come back. Please yeah. come you back. can watch that match on YouTube as well. Huh, cool. Yeah. But what I mean is, like, it's... It's, it's Almost huge. like a European WrestleMania weekend, yeah. in a way, where there's it a... It's one place, in lots a of wrestling. Of a town, yeah. <laughs> I've never been there. <laughs> Next year. Maybe, well, I can't get the good tickets now, so well, yeah. I'll take the second row. As long as George Kukas isn't standing in front of me, I think we'll, I might we'll get press access for Kiko. Maybe I'll, I've heard. I've heard we have a, a few guys of WSW watching us. So greetings to all the WSW. I'll, just, staff I'll sit on George Kukas' shoulders. It'll be fine. I'll have the best for you. Is he? He wasn't there. No, but I'll by then I'll pay him off. So you buy That's two tickets. That's how he's not going to attack yeah, me. Yeah. Okay. No, we'll just he'll put a really long coat on no. and I'll go we'll I'll be on his shoulders. That'd okay. be great. Oh, so it's just one ticket then? Yeah. Okay. You're not that small. Oh. Say that to the people behind me. They Fuck. won't be able to see. Also, wir sehen uns nächste Woche wieder. Wir werden dann wieder live sein. Franz hat das versprochen. Vielleicht ist Chris dann auch wieder da. Gute Besserung natürlich an Chris. Äh, vielen Dank an euch und alle, die zugeschaut haben und jede Woche wieder einschalten. Bitte kommentiert und äh, Schreibt was drunter, ansonsten fühlen wir uns sehr einsam und äh, besucht uns auch nächste Woche auch wieder, wenn wir dann auch wieder auf Twitch senden. Bis dann, macht's gut, tschüssi. Tschüss.